How's it going my dudes? Welcome back to another video. This is part 2 of how to choose your subs and if you have not watched part 1, I would suggest that you do it right at the link above. It covers exactly how you can do perfect skill combos and how to maximize your leader DPS unit. And if you have, thank you for watching that video and now we can proceed on with part 2 where I go in detail with how you should select your subunits based on their abilities as well as based on their elements and all that good stuff. It can get a little bit technical so do bear with me. It might be a really long video for this one but I have a lot of things to say about how you can theorycraft and build your perfect team. Do know that while I do use some of the most OP units, it is not essential at all. Uh, there's a lot of ways that you can play around with 3 and 4 star units that are exceptional in their function. So I will be going through some of the 3 and 4 star units as well, uh, just to show you how they can be quite useful in building your team. So let's begin. Now before we get into it, there are 3 questions that you should ask yourself. Okay, Number 1, abilities that fit the role. Okay, So DPS means are best run with subs that boost their own DPS, as they tend to have abilities that boost stats a great deal. Okay, so which units do you have that can do exactly that, right? Take a look at your roster. Three star units can be extremely useful as sub characters for their abilities as well, and I, I will share some with you in just a moment. In question number two, uh, the element of the sub is usually not much of a concern because the sub is generally chosen based on their buffs rather than for their nuking potential. Of course, okay, there are lineups where your sub is meant to dish out damage as well, and sometimes the sub becomes your leading DPS. Uh, while your main becomes your true sub, okay? So for example, there is this one punch lineup uh, which disregards this point entirely but this will be for another video, okay? So let's, let's start easy. And the third question that you should ask yourself is what is your goal, okay? Is it to strike progressively harder? Is it to burst skills instantly? Or is it to just survive and be carried by your other co-op mates and your friends? So the choice in your sub greatly matters here and you really need to commit to the theme to truly excel in it. And now on to the fun technical things, okay? So I will be using my own lineups to explain uh, most of the details uh, because these are what comes to me naturally and this is how I can explain like why this works, okay? So number one, your sub uses its skills in its own element. Okay, so this means that you could equip a White Tails Axe on your Wind type main unit right over here and still benefit from its effect when your sub or maybe another dual sub of Thunder Element uses their skill. So in this case, uh, I don't have any subs who are Thunder type. So uh, my Suzu, she is Thunder type. So when she uses her skill, this X actually triggers immediately. Okay, so when Thunder units activate a skill in your party, it's not really clearly stated. 40% skill damage is increased for yourself. So do take note that for this case, um, this Viron over here, he will be using his skills with a Dark Element. So if you're fighting something that is weak, to, let's say win, right? Uh, Viron, he's still probably going to be super useful, but in, in other cases, uh, your sub may, may actually lack in that sense. And number two, okay, buffs that your main receives is received by the duo. This is something that is mind blowing to me. Um, I actually play around and tested a lot and also question people, question the experts, okay? So if your sub is a thunder type, like let's say this over here, okay? So if your sub is a thunder type and your main receives a buff based on its own element, your thunder sub will still receive that buff. So for example, let's take a look at uh, the weapon on Suzu on the right here. Okay, while levitating, you get plus 60% attack buff. And this only applies to wind units, okay? So clearly I do have a wind Murakumo over here, right? So he will definitely get the 60% attack buff. This is for sure, As I mean when he's levitating of course. But what about uh, Rams over here. Okay, does Rams get the buff? Yes, he does. She, well, she does get the buff. Um, this is incredible in team building as it allows you a great deal of flexibility in crafting a lineup that makes sense. Okay, so many a time you will need to give up one thing only to receive something greater. So in this case, uh, I exchanged, okay, so, okay, ignoring the fact that I need the skill gauge over here, right? Ignoring the fact that I need the skill gauge, I generally would want to use Rams as the leader because he provides 100% skill damage to Thunder units such as himself, right? But Murakumo only gives 50% attack to wind type units and that's it. But my main damage dealer here is going to be my Rams. So there's always going to be this exchange. You need to give up your leader being Rams in order to receive a lot of extra buffs. Like you see all these weapons over here, Calamity Blade plus 40% attack buff during Levitate 
and all my weapon souls at the bottom, uh, save for the third one, uh, they also buff your attack during levitation and it only applies to wind type units. So it's really important that you know about this concept and that you understand that you need to give up something to receive something greater. And now moving on to point number three, your sub does not receive buffs. Okay, this is really important as well. Uh, this is reversed to what point number two is. And you can think of your duo as one entity sharing the mains element, but performing two different skills of possibly separate elements, like in this case. So if your main is not a wind type, okay, let's just say, if your main is not a wind type, but your sub is a wind type, then this duo will not benefit from the from the Reggie X and the Reggie Sword over here. So so like let's say if I switch uh, Murakumo with Rams, right? Everything breaks. This does not work anymore. This is very important. Your duo will not benefit from this, and your lineup completely fails. So do take note of that. And point number four, it is perfectly sensible to build a team revolving around one single DPS. Okay, so I, I realize that a lot of players, okay, because I, I I play a lot of pubs, okay. Uh, a lot of the bells that I receive, a lot of the players, I realize that their team, they tend to focus on like three different DPS or maybe two different DPS. Okay, it works as well, that's great because you have constant DPS all over the place, you have a lot of skills that dish a lot of damage, right? But it is also perfectly sensible to build a team revolving around one DPS like I have. Okay, so this is exactly why Shasuzu over here, she is so strong because her entire kit fits this narrative. Okay, so. Um, if you have watched my previous video, linked above right here, you will see how you can abuse Suzu to deploy massive combos. I showed you exactly how using her, uh, you have this two-step combo every single time, okay? So in this sense, the subs of your other two duos could very well be defined to focus on your leader instead of the main of the respective duos, okay? So I, I have been, I've been talking a lot about how your subs should benefit the main, but I have not actually talked about how other subs should benefit your main main okay so like for example look over here jake right plus 20 percent attack buff plus 20 percent attack buff again to the leader okay so he doesn't actually benefit Theria over here he doesn't really benefit much of course um most of my team this setup everything revolves around sushi and this works really well point number five the stats of your sub does matter okay so 25 percent of your sub stats are actually contributing to your overall stats. So let's take a look at my Sushi over here. He has 1,330 attack at the bottom here, right? So if I remove Byron, who has um, 822, so 25% of this would be about 205, right? So it should be about 205. If I remove Byron, I should lose about 205 attack. And yeah, it's 205 exactly the stats of your sub does matter so it's very important for you to try to push them to level 100 especially if this is a team that you want to fund well and push it on to further content so that's really important uh that's why i'm working on maxing my viron just because uh, he's going to add extra stats to my sushi but not that i actually care about his stats at all right and furthermore your dual skill gauge is the average of your main and your sub skill gauges Okay, so this can be quite important in fine-tuning the turn order of your team. Okay, this is very important. You don't just take note of your main skill gauge and then you call it a day, okay? You need to do the average. So for example, Sushi over here, he has a skill gauge of 565. I mean, that's after some upgrades, okay? 565 and Viron is a little bit higher at 635. So because of Viron, um, I actually cast my skills a lot slower, right? So 535. 565 plus 535 divided by 2, yeah, it's about 600, I think. So it's about 600. Oh, yeah, it's here. There you go. I just learned something new today. <laughs> okay, so this can be really important for fine-tuning your turn order of your team. And many a time, your team will be better off if your supports actually take their turns faster or take their turns before your main DPS does. And on to point number 6, which is perfecting your turn order. Even if your supports have longer skill gauges, there are ways to speed that up. Such as using yellow blobber over here, uh, he boosts your mains skill gauge by 100% at max. And Shirano over here, who self boosts 80% uh, skill gauge right, to herself, which is also her main. And also after she activates a skill, uh, for once in the match, she actually gives 30% uh, skill gauge to all other allied units. This is really important in 
many comps. She is, even though she's a three star, right? Like even Yellow Blobble is just a one star. Like even though Shirano is a three star character, she is exceptional. She really ties a lot of teams in together. And she is extremely free to play friendly, which makes her an extremely good choice in any team. And there are also ways to manage skill gauges with consistencies, okay, such as with units like Taiga, another exceptional 3-star character. Uh, if you take a look over here, whenever you hit anything, okay, a ball is launched off the flippers. This ball is not a multi-ball, it's anything, even your unit itself. 2.5% of your skill gauge gets added. So like every 10 flips, right, every 10 flips that you do, you add 2.5% to your skill gauge, and not only that, uh, whenever you activate a skill, you add 5% uh, attack buff to yourself, maximum at, max at 25%, and this goes up if it's fully upgraded, right? And his skill itself, I think it does like 37 times damage or something like that, it's, it's crazy, okay? Yeah, even though his skill gauge is really one of the highest in the game, um, he does manage it very well like that. So uh, with, with some characters like Taiga, you can actually use it as your leader's sub. Okay, and he performs really well. You don't really need like Viron or, or some of those really meta units. If your team is sensible, it will work. That's it. And of course, at the end of the day, you know, if whatever they have said is too much for you to take in and understand that, uh, you can actually just press your abilities at the bottom and you can see whatever that is active. See? All these are active and all these are inactive. And yeah, you can do that for all your characters and then you can see these are like your weapon souls, this is your weapon passive, and this is your sub passive, and these are your main passives. So there you go. Uh, that's all I have for you for this video right now. Um, I'm sure there will be other things that I want to add that I just didn't think of. And if I did not think of something that was really crucial, do let me know down in the comments and I'll be happy to read it and probably add on to my list in the future, right? So with that said, thank you so much for watching. If this video has been helpful, do consider giving me a thumbs up. That really helps the video, that really helps the channel grow. And it also gives me a lot of incentive to continue making videos such as this. Once again, my name has been Free to Play by the way. I'll see you, as always, in the next video.